Hi, I'm Philip with G6 Technology Services. In this video, we're going to be preparing one of the auction computers for sale. And to do that, we're going to put a solid state drive in it, put some RAM in it, and then we're going to give it a good cleaning. Install Windows, and then it'll be ready to go. So let's get started. Okay, so here's our auction computer that we're going to be getting ready to sell. It's one of the Optiplex 790s, and it's been tested uh, thoroughly. Everything is good. So what we're going to have to do is remove our test RAM. So I'll just go ahead and do that right here. Okay. Inside, we don't have anything to mount this SSD with. So I'm going to have to figure out some way to do that. And then it's a little bit dirty. We have some dust down inside the fan. And uh, this other fan is a little bit dirty, so we're going to give it a, a nice deep clean. So I'll show you what we have to work with in terms of parts. We have a crucial 2.5 inch SSD, 240 gigabyte model. And then we have our uh, Patriot um, PC3 uh, RAM, 4 gigabytes. And then another one right here, 4 gigabytes, DDR3 RAM. So we'll be installing both of those and the solid state drive right here. Okay, so it's nice and clean now. Got the uh, heat sink all cleaned out. Got this other fan all cleaned out. So we'll go ahead and install our memory. So we'll notice the uh, four slots and there's black and white slots. And I don't know if you can see, I'll try to zoom in but they're actually labeled. Oh, where is it? Yeah, it's, it's not gonna show up very well, but it does say which number have the lights reflecting off it. It's not gonna show up, but it shows, uh, you can see it in person. It shows what number each one is. Uh, on the left is dim three. The next one is dim one then DIMM 4, then DIMM 2. So the black are one channel and the white are another channel. So the uh, manual says for best performance, you want to have the same amount and type of RAM in each channel. So since we have our two um, four gigabyte DIMMs, we're going to put them in DIMMs uh, 1 and 3 in here. So that way the black channel and the white channel have the same amount. So we'll go ahead and do that right now. Okay. We'll do the other one. We'll do the exact same thing. Just even pressure, push it down until it latches in. And you do want to make sure they end up going down all the way. Sometimes they can be a little bit stiff, but it's uh, not going to be good if they're not in all the way. It won't be recognized or you might have some issues. And we'll go ahead and just flip up these other latches just to clean it up. And there we go. We've got our two modules in there. Now it comes to the hardest part, which is this SSD. I don't know what we're going to do because there's nowhere to mount it. I don't think there's a way to attach it anywhere. if I try to use one of these little square holes to put a screw through it puts the drive too low and the connector won't fit so that connector might just have to float in there so I'm gonna try a few things and see what I can come up with and I'll come back all right I don't love it but options are limited so I just zip tied it into place it's uh, a little bit janky there but it's uh, secured anyway, so it's not going anywhere. That at least keeps it from flopping around. 
So I'll go ahead and get the cover and we'll set it up and plug it in and we'll first of all I guess make sure it boots up which uh, we already did test it but hopefully everything still works and then we'll reinstall Windows. Okay, let's get our cover back on. There we go. Just snaps into place. And then I'll get it flipped around and we'll start plugging it in. Okay, I'm ready to plug it in. So we've got our power cord over here. I actually leave that end out for now just so it doesn't accidentally turn on when I'm not ready. So I'll just get that in there. And then I'm going to steal the uh, keyboard and mouse from this computer. And we'll grab our VGA. And then I'm going to get my flash drive and we'll get it started up. Okay, got the uh, Windows 10 drive. So we'll just go ahead and plug that in. Of course, it's the wrong way around. And then our monitor's on. Get our power cord here. And we'll plug that in. And... Okay, didn't automatically turn on, so we'll just go ahead and hit the power button. And then let's see what happens. Okay, that's a good sign. Yep, that's fine. Because we upgraded the memory, so it's detected that the amount is different. Okay, great. So that's probably going to take a minute, so I will just come back when the setup has loaded. Okay, we've got setup, so we'll go ahead and just click next. Uh, English and US are fine here. Yep, install now. Okay, and then I'm just going to skip this for now, the product key, we'll just... Uh, enter that in after it's installed and this is going to be pro oops okay pro next accept and then custom and it is showing our full drive and we're just going to use the whole drive so we'll just make sure to click on the drive and hit next and there it goes. So this is going to take a few minutes, so I'll just come back when it's done. Okay, well we're making some progress. All right, yep, that's better. Getting things ready. So I, if I remember correctly, I think this process takes a little while too. So I'll just stop here and we'll come back whenever it's ready to go. Okay, we're all set to continue. So we'll just go through this initial setup. And I don't remember if it's always been like this, but I think this is normal. This uh, blue window, it makes it look like it's stuck in a, you know, smaller uh, resolution, but I don't think it actually is because the pointer goes all the way to the end. So I don't know why they don't have this blue box fill the whole screen. It looks like it's 800 by 600 or something. So let's hit yes. US keyboard. No. Network. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just hit I don't have internet right now because I think it forces you to create a Microsoft account if you have it connected to the internet 
at this stage. So we'll plug that in after we can create our local account. Okay, well, I'll come back when we get to the desktop. All right, in the meantime, I got all of this adhesive residue off. It looks good as new. That's a scratch. That's not uh, glue, and so is this. And I just really have to say I like this product. This is what we use. It comes in a can like that. 3M Anti-Static Electronic Equipment Cleaner. And uh, it does a great job. You can, uh, with its sticker adhesive, you just kind of spray it on and let it sit. And um, it just breaks down. Here's the uh, model number, CL600, and there's the UPC in case you want some. But it gets stuff off really well. If you just let it soak on an adhesive residue, it just breaks it down and it comes right off. Okay, well, it looks like we're back at our desktop. So that's good. We do still have a working computer. So let's just check out our specs and make sure everything is detected. Yep, perfect. So we have our eight gigabytes of memory. And then we'll go over to this PC. Yep, and we've got our SSD showing up. And we've got 20.3 gigabytes used, so we haven't run um, Windows Update yet, but if you're wondering how much space a bare Windows 10 install takes up, it's a little over 20 gigs, it looks like. So that still leaves this uh, customer with plenty of space for uh, whatever they want to do with it. So I think what we're going to do now is I'm just going to get our Ethernet uh, cable. And we'll go ahead, where is it? It's caught over here on the table. So we'll just plug that in. And then, let's see, it's still sorting itself out. Okay, there we go. Mm, why not? And connected. So we'll go over to start. I'll just put in updates. And check for updates. So that's one thing uh, I can say. Oh gosh, that's a lot. But it's doing it. So that's one thing I can say is really convenient about Windows 10, is when you do a fresh installation, well, first of all, you can download ISOs that already have, I don't know, I guess you can equate it to service packs, like back in the days of XP and Windows 7, but you know, the latest feature updates. So you don't have to sit there and download 500 gigabytes of updates whenever you do a fresh installation. And Windows Update, in Windows 10 is a lot more stable in my experience than it was in Windows XP or Windows 7. I used to get it, get uh, weird problems with it uh, where it would hang up and not want to install. But this seems to work a lot better. So I'll just uh, let this run. It'll probably, there'll be a few rounds because uh, when this is finished it'll want to reboot. And then I guess that was a graphics driver that just updated. But yeah, I don't want to reboot, and then there's going to be updates that depended on a previous update being installed for it to show up. So we're not going to have everything in this one list. I think we're, we may already be on the latest feature update. I'm not sure, but we'll check on that. So I'll just let it run and do all these updates, reboot however many times, and we'll come back when it's finished. Okay, so I lied. It's not finished yet, but I'm back early. So I just wanted to show you the task manager. We can see that little um, mound right there where it starts, you know, right uh, here and ends right here. That was the time that it was taking to install all those updates. And I'm just pleased to see that it never went above 50% on the CPU. And uh, our memory has been pretty much stable 
using about two gigabytes. So that's pretty good. That's something that I definitely notice on computers that don't have very good CPUs, or maybe it's only a dual core CPU, is even just doing simple things or running Windows Update, it pegs the CPU. It's at 100% the whole time. The whole thing is slow and unusable. Let's see, it wants me to restart. So we'll do that. And uh, so now I've I've said my little piece on the task manager. So this time it will be the truth. I'll come back when it's finished with all the updates. Well, it's finished updating now. So we're completely up to date. And uh, I was right earlier. I double checked. We were already on the latest feature update. That's what was on the uh, USB drive. So it installed with the latest feature updates. So it was just doing security and drivers and things. So as far as I can see, everything's ready to go. I don't think there's anything else I want to do. Um, I generally try to avoid installing third-party software unless the customer asks for it, in which case I don't mind just doing that for free. If you know When somebody buys this, if they want Chrome or something on there, I'll do it for them. And uh, another nice thing that I'll do to help them out if they uh, pay for a Microsoft Office license, if they want to have that software on there, then I'll go ahead and install that for them too. But I'll wait until it's requested. I don't like to do that ahead of time because I just feel like whenever you sell a computer, it should be you know, as pure as possible, no junk, just you know, what comes with a basic Windows installation. So anyway, I've rambled about that long enough, so we're all done here. I'm just going to close out of that. And we'll just go to shutdown. And there we go. I have a nice Optiplex 790 with 8 gigs of RAM and a 240 gigabyte solid state drive ready to sell. So uh, until next time, uh, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed and have a great day. Okay, just a quick little update. So I activated Windows. Also, I looked in the BIOS to check the RAM configuration and it said that it was running in single channel mode. So I guess I didn't quite have the uh, configuration right. So instead of there being one in a black socket and one in a white socket, it wanted both of them in the white socket. And then it said it was dual channel. So I had to update that, but that's showing up fine now. Also, I ran the uh, service tag on the Dell support website and there was an urgent firmware update, so I went ahead and ran that. So now I think we're finally finished and it's all ready to go. And uh, I've got the label on there so I know which configuration it is because we're going to have a bunch of these ready to go. So that's the 8 gig RAM, 240 gig SSD. And uh, yeah, so I think that's it now. Just wanted to give you a quick update because that was bugging me that I did forget to activate Windows and then uh, I had come across those other things that I wanted to check. So anyway, this is the end for real this time. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.